Okay, here we're going to make a comparison between the equity method and the cost method when we're making a consolidation. And that's where we're consolidating the parent's financial statements with the uh, subsidiary's financial statements. And our starting point with both of these methods here is how we align our investment account here in the subsidiary with the equity accounts for the uh, parent and the subsidiary. And that's basically the difference between both of them here. So what I'm going to go through here is in detail and how we make this alignment here between the equi or the investment account and the in equity accounts and we'll start here with the equity method okay we'll be starting here with our consolidation using the simple equity method here and what we're going to be doing here is an invest in aligning the investment account here with the equity account so they are at the same point in time or they have the same date okay now looking at our consolidation worksheet here for year two we have to bring the investment account here in the subsidiary, which is sitting at uh, the end of the year here, X2 at 12, the 1231 date, in line with the equity account here, which is sitting at 1-1 one, one, or the beginning of year two here. So to do that, we have to go in and we have to make any, our adjustments here to our investment here in the subsidiary. And this is based on the uh, 1231 end of the year date here. So at the end of the year, we have a $275,400 balance here in this in investment in the sub here and what we have to do is bring it back to three hundred and six thousand dollars here that's what would been sitting here at 1231 at the x1 of the end of year one which equals the beginning of year two or january first of year two so in this case uh, the uh, subsidiary here had a loss of uh, $24,000. The revenues here were less than the expenses here by $24,000. So the parent got 90% of that and that would have been $21,600 here credited to our investment here in the sub by $21,600. And then the subsidiary also declared a dividend here uh, dividend declared here. So go over here, the parent would have got 90% of that here. So that would have been $9,000. Again, credit or reduce the sub account here by $9,000. So now to make our elimination and adjustments on our worksheet, we just take the credit here for the $21,600 and we would debit that to our, our adjustment account here in, for the investment in the subsidiary. And then the balancing entry here, we go to a subsidiary loss here of $21,600 for our adjustments. And then the uh, uh, dividend here of $9,000, which was credited to the subs account here, that we would put in and we debit uh, our, uh, our adjustments here for $9,000. And then we'd also, the balancing amount here would go to a dividend then declared here for $9,000. So we have brought our investment and in sub back to the beginning of the year, what it would have been worth here in the beginning of year two to $306,000. And through these adjustments here, it was sitting here at $275,400. So we did bring it back here to $306,000, the beginning of the year amount. Okay, here we're going to be looking at the consolidation using the cost method, and it's going to be for year two after the acquisition. Now, uh, this procedure here could be used for any subsequent years, like three, four, five, and so on. And we're going to be using a consolidation worksheet. So the first thing we have to do is align our investment account here, the apparent their investment here in the subsidiary corporation with the equity accounts here for the parent and the uh, subsidiary. So our investment account here uh, is sitting at 1-1 one, one or the January 1st of the first year here of the acquisition and that is based on the fact that I, using the cost method this investment here is maintained at its original cost and in this case it was 1-1 one, one or January 1st of uh, X1 of the first year. And our retained earnings here uh, is based on the current year here. Uh, it would be 1-1 one, one of year 2 or X2. So we have to make an adjustment here uh, to adjust our uh, amounts here for the date adjustment here between the investment account and our uh, equity account here. So first, well, let's look at our retained earnings here. Uh, in this case, it was 344000 here for the corporation P. So looking at our retained earnings here, that's at the... Um, current year here of the uh, January 1st of the second year or year X2 and what's included it included here for uh, year one now 
in this case using the cost method the parents percent of the subs net income here for year one is not included and that happened to be fifty four thousand dollars and then the parents dividends are received here from the sub uh, sub declared a dividend that was included here for eighteen thousand dollars so just taking the difference between the two here uh, the total income that's not included for year one is thirty six thousand dollars so we're going to have to make an adjustment for that amount between our investment account up here and the equity account now just to refresh our memories here the cost method the income is recorded only when the dividends are declared by the subsidiary and for year X1 the income is recorded for the dividends received of $18,000 but not for the parents percent of the net income that they would have been apportioned out here for $54,000 so that we have to account for in our adjustment Okay, in order to get a date alignment between the investment account and the equity accounts, we're going to convert this investment account up to the uh, January 1st of the second year, uh, which would match the equity account here. And we're going to use a simple equity balance, and it's calculated as follows. So this is the equity conversion. We take the retained earnings of the subsidiary at the beginning of the current year, which would be January 1st of X2 or year 2, and that amount here is $180,000. And we compare it to the retained earnings at the date of purchase or that would be at the original costing date here and that would be January 1st of X1 or year 1 and that's $140,000 so the difference between the two here would be the change in the subs retained earnings of $40,000 now the parents ownership percent would be 90% in this case so the equity conversion here with the parent would be $36,000 so going over to our worksheet here we would increase or debit our investment here in the subs subsidiary for $36,000. That's our investment account here. And then the balancing amount would be to credit uh, retained earnings here for the parent uh, corporation here for $36,000. So what we've done here is we've brought this investment account here up to the uh, date here of our equity account here of January 1st of the second year. So they're matching now. Okay, the other major difference between the cost method and equity method for consolidating the parent with the subsidiary would be how we record the dividends declared here from the subsidiary and the income earned by the parent from the subsidiary. So looking at our equity method, the income is recorded for the parent's percent of the sub's net income plus the percent of dividends declared by the subsidiary. So going over to our worksheet here, we can see our, in this case, the subsidiary income would have been shown here at $54,000 here for the parent. And then the uh, dividends here would have been debited to the uh, investment here of the uh, subsidiary by the parent here for $18,000 in this case. Now going down and looking at our cost method. Now the income is recorded only when dividends are declared by the subsidiary. They only get uh, record income for the dividends that are declared. And no parents percent of the subs net income would be recorded here. So going over to our worksheet here, we can see our subsidiary income here would be based on the dividends declared here by the uh, sub. And finally, any remaining eliminations for the consolidation using the cost method versus the equity method would really be the same. But I do have to alert you to one fact here. When we're eliminating the equity portion here of the subsidiary for the common stock and the retained earnings, work off the uh, worksheet here rather than off the distribution schedule because the distribution schedule has the retained earnings at the acquisition date, whereas the uh, worksheet here has it at the current date and that's what you should be doing here to re eliminate the common stock and retain earnings here um, the parents portion here against the investment account here